Welcome to our webinar on how to keep your dog engaged during the lockdown. The webinar is brought to you by Portect, a company that does medical insurance for your pets. My name is Shirin Merchant and I've been a canine behaviorist and trainer for over 25 years. It's now been weeks since we've been in the lockdown. And as much as we initially enjoyed the chance of being home, spending time with our dogs, the lockdown has everyone frustrated, including our dogs. And often pet parents are now complaining about dogs destroying the house or showing early signs of stereotypy behaviors, being cranky, or even signs of aggression that weren't there before. So why are our dogs doing all this? Very much like how we are becoming cranky, irritable, and impatient with the lockdown, our dogs too are having a very hard time adjusting to the loss of their outdoor fun. And one of the main problems we face is that our dogs cannot go out to socialize, exercise, or have fun. But that doesn't mean our dogs cannot have any fun at all. With a little imagination, simple items lying around the homes, we can ensure that our dogs don't get bored. They can be happy and healthy through this difficult period. So here are some ways you can help your dog be entertained. The first thing we'd look at is physical exercise. This is so important and a lot of our dogs need this of course and this is where people struggle because a lot of you have said we're not allowed to take our dogs out, maybe the police stop you, maybe you're in a containment zone and it's becoming harder and harder or you can just go down for very quick toileting breaks. So if you are one of the lucky ones, like I do know a lot of people who live outside a little bit of Bombay, maybe Navi Mumbai and they can take their dogs for longer walks in a close by forest. Or if you're in an area where your dog can get out, maybe to a terrace, a building compound, a place where your dog can physically get some exercise, do take your dog out because physical exercise is very important. And go for a walk, play a game outdoors because it's not just the physical exercise part. It's just being outdoors, being in nature. That is so important to our growth and our well-being. So if you can do that, do it. Now a lot of you are going to say but we can't do that. So what about that then? How do we do it? So another thing you can do is play games with your dog that engage the mind. And one of the best things you can do with your dog is scent work games. So you can see my dog, she's in our building compound here. We've made sure there's nobody else around so it's safe, there's social distancing. And I've hidden her toy and she's looking for it. So physically also, she's moving, her nose is working, her brain is working, and she's having a lot of fun. About 20 minutes of this really can tire out most dogs. And all dogs love using their noses. You've got to give this a try with your dog. If you can't do it in a building compound, for any reason you don't have access to that, play this game in your house. Hide a toy somewhere in your house and let her go look for it. So you can hide yourself. Play hide and seek where she comes and looks for a person, a toy, anything. But this is a great way to physically and mentally exercise your dog because it keeps the dog engaged. So any scenting game where your dog uses its nose is amazing. And of course, when she finds it, go to town with the praise and it makes it a really special fun game. The next thing you can do is make the recalls interesting. How do you do that? So a recall is something that I always call as a life-saving command for dogs. Because if your dog can leave whatever it's doing and come back to you, you never know when you need it. It also can give your dog its freedom. So teaching recalls is important. Making them into a fun game, even more important. So here you can just see basic recalls, but how about you practice it in your house? So one of the ways is you can have someone hold your dog in the living room. You go to a bedroom and call the dog. He'll come running knowing where you are. Great, you give him a lot of love. The person calls him back to the living room, gives him lots of love again. Now without the dog's knowledge, you move to another room and call. He'll go back to the first bedroom, can't see you there, start looking for you. So it 
makes the recall fun. It keeps your dog engaged, keeps him on his toes. And it's just a very nice game to play to have fun with your dog. Another thing you can do is make your meal times fun. Most of us make our meal times for dogs really boring. We put kibble in their bowls or food in their bowls and they eat it. There is no fun experience to the food as such. In the natural state, a dog would use his nose to go on a hunt. When he's finally hunted the animal down, he'd use his paws or, and his jaws to, to take down the food, tear it apart, to eat it. So there's a whole sensory experience to eating. We've taken that away from our dogs by giving them food in a bowl. So what you could do is the dry parts of your dog food. If you feed kibble, you'll have lots of that. Otherwise, if you're feeding fresh home-cooked meals, take out the dry bits. How about scattering those in your home? If you have access to a balcony or a garden, if you're lucky, um, scatter the food in the lawn. Let your dog use his nose to work for it. They love, dogs love working for their food. And what will happen is even after he's eaten the last piece, he'll keep looking for another 10 minutes because he doesn't know it's the last piece. So hide it, take your kibble, put one behind the chair, one under the dining table, one behind the sofa, under a cupboard and let your dog watch. The first few times let your dog watch so he gets the gist and then tell him go find your food. And You'll see that tail wagging non-stop as he looks for it. This is also a great game to play with dogs that are bored of their food, are fussy eaters. You can try this game. It's great and everybody can do it. Other ways you can make mealtimes fun for dogs is to, you can put it in a Kong and let the dog work its way around a Kong toy and find the food. You can take a Tetra Pak container, cut it in half, empty it out and put food in that. So you could put a bit of kibble, then a little vegetable soup, freeze the whole thing, put a few vegetable sticks inside. There's so much you can do with this. And the dog will love it. They love working. You can even now in summer, freeze the food in the bowl. So if you, if you even want to give it in the bowl, freeze it. Now the dog has to gnaw through the ice to get at it. It'll be messy, but so much fun for your dog. And of course, a lot of dogs at this point are chewing up things around the house. Right? Chewing up sofas out of boredom or stealing things and running away. Why not give your dog some acceptable things to chew on? And you don't need to go out this time and buy toys or things. If your dog is bored with them, that's fine. What you see in the video here is she's actually making a fun DIY toy for the dog. So there's a squeaky ball inside. There's a bit of lemongrass she's put inside as well. Strips of an old t-shirt. She's knotted it up. So can you see some, such a lot of sensory experience? The noise of the squeak, the taste of the lemongrass, the thrill of getting your teeth stuck in the knots on the cloth. There's so much fun. You could use anything lying around your house at this time. An empty plastic bottle, put it in a sock, put some treats inside, let your dog find a way to get to those. Um, old dupatas, knot them up. It can be a nice, fun, engaging game for a dog to play with. Just look around your house. There's so many things you can use to make DIY toys. So get active, get creative and do things. It's good to keep you busy also during this time. And another very important thing is the senses. All dogs like us have five senses. The sense of smell, taste, touch, hearing and sight stimulate those stimulate them as much as you possibly can and again like i said you don't need to spend money just be creative so let's take say the sense of smell you could maybe peel an orange or a lime and leave that open in the room you'll see your dog's nose quivering you could light an incense stick leave out something like garlic onion peeled onion or garlic remember it doesn't always have to be very pleasant it could be slightly tangy spicy smells that the dog has to learn to figure out and you'll see a dog actually lying down suddenly saying what is that smell that smells odd or that smells nice or this smells interesting flowers anything just be creative anything you have at home you could walk around and put that smell in the room and change it every day or so so it stays stimulating what about the sense of touch 
so many of our dogs just touching the same thing the same floor every day you could maybe put foil on the kitchen floor and let your dog walk about on that most dogs find that very interesting as your dog learns to understand how to balance not to slip and these are things you have lying around right you could line up a room with just um, cushions maybe and get your dog to jump over those and come to you so there's a lot of sensory experience in these things one of my dog's favorite games is to tear up amazon containers and cartons she loves playing games like that and empty shoe box you put a few treats in let her figure it out or an egg carton there's so many ways you could do things you could even take a say a wide bucket put some water in put a few floating treats and toys inside and let her figure how to get to that you know if you have a bubble wrap let your dog walk all over that if you've got bubbles at home you can make bubbles out of soap water let your dog engage and play with that also the sense of taste there's so much you could do so you could of course you feed your dog its regular food which is fine but how about something soft like a banana so it's not just about the taste here i'd like you to also look at the texture because when dogs eat it's not just the taste they take in also the texture a soft banana you could maybe freeze it some frozen fruits um great treats for dogs to crunch about get a slightly sweet taste carrot sticks really hard you have to gnaw on them so vary your dog's food you can give a piece of dry toast this is not just about the diet this is also about expanding the different tastes because that makes life a little more exciting for the dog visually you could do a lot a lot of you wrote written in and said my dog loves to watch tv and actually watches it that's great if your dog likes that but other things you could do is maybe change a bit of the visual aspect of your home if you have a balcony and your dog likes to look out at things passing by that's a great visual stimulation for most dogs they can spend hours looking at the world go by but other small things you could do maybe cut streamers from old newspapers and hang them on the fan and put the fan on really slow they'll twirl about in the air and your dog will have something to occupy his mind looking at them old dupattas can become curtains old sarees can become curtains again or just take your dog to a place maybe where he can look out so maybe stand at your building gate if you're allowed to and watch the world go by but visually find ways to stimulate your dog and of course the sense of hearing lots of dogs love music so you could play that um look up somebody called Rustam Warden he has a lot of lovely music therapy for dogs and that could be something interesting we have a few audio clips of his music on our website at shirinmerchant.com if you look up the blog uh, for the 21 day challenge there is one post on music therapy there are audio clips for you to download for your dog to play and here you could play music like the sounds of nature birds children laughing you could hang wind chimes there's so much you can do for the dog senses another thing you can do with your dog is to play cognitive games you see here this dog she's been taught when the phone rings she comes and gives a call so basically what is canine cognition it's like a mental action of or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought experience and senses basically a dog has the knowledge applies it to solve a certain situation so this is a game like we train her for that you can train your dog for these things lots of this is up on the internet find ways to play games do training that increase your dog's cognitive skills so a lot of such games could be which hand has it you hide a treat in one hand no treat in the second hand the dog has to figure so again these are processes of the brain that the dog needs to use to figure this out you could use something like a wobble board basically if you have like a small piece of plank or thick cardboard put a little tennis ball in the middle below and it becomes like a wobble board like kind of like a seesaw and make your dog stand on that slowly um one paw at a time maybe and now he has to use his mental skills to balance a lot of the muscles are being used so it's a great game for dogs so cognitive things interactive games you could do home agility 
create an obstacle course in your house, teach your dog to weave around chairs. You can crawl under a sofa if possible. You could use maybe blankets, towels, so you can hang a towel over two chairs and make like a tunnel and teach your dog to go through that. You've got a lot of things maybe lying around at home with which your dog can go over, under, through. It's great. Once your dog does all the different things of jumping and crawling and weaving, you could put together an entire obstacle course for your dog. And dogs love that. They just love agility. Once they get into it, it's amazing. So use what you've got at home. You can pile up cushions maybe to form a sort of a weave barrier for your dogs to work through. Here you see like and or you can just use these PVC pipes to make your own agility. You can use interactive dog toys. There's so many in the market today. Basically, again, the dog has to use his cognitive skills, shift the puzzle around to get to the treats that are hidden inside. There are lots of these on the market. Take a look at some of them. And you know what? Even if not all this, Use this time to just have fun. What makes you have fun? Because that's also important. If you're bored, if you're dreary, if you're depressed, that's going to affect your dog. So you should have fun. So it doesn't have to be a game only where your dog's having fun. You can have fun too. So in this little clip, one of my students, this is Pradnya and her little Weimarana Rory, they're doing a very cute song and dance routine. And if you look at it, there's not a lot of training involved. It's just fun. Take a look at this. fun wasn't it and remember when you have fun when your dog has fun it releases the happy hormones the endorphins and those counteract the stress hormone cortisol remember stress is building in you it's building in your dog and that's maybe unavoidable I get it it's unavoidable maybe at this time to have cortisol but we can release endorphins by doing things that we have fun and you could see here there was not a lot of training involved as such but so much fun. So you, if you tell me, but my dog isn't trained, that's fine. You can still do all of these things and just do things. Maybe just put on music and dance. It doesn't need to be choreographed. Jump about with your dog. Somersault on your bed. Just have fun with your dog. And a lot of people at this time have said, but our old schedule, we did walks, we did this, we did that. It's gone for a toss because of the lockdown. I get that. Embrace a new schedule at this time. It's okay. Don't stress about the old one. You can cuddle with your dog. Let your dog join you maybe if you're doing meditation or yoga. If your dog likes having fun parties, maybe orchestrate a small fun party for your dog where it's just you and your dog having fun maybe. Look out of the window. Watch the birds flying together. Like I said earlier, you can blow up soap bubbles. You could just fill a little bucket like this with some fun water and let your dog splash about if it enjoys that. And this is important at this time that we learn to de-stress, we learn to relax and we learn to have fun. And what about training? A lot of you have said our training, what do we do? Well, you can actually use your training like say a fetch command. You can make it creative. So this little dog, she's actually an assistance dog and she le she's learned she can pick up things and put them in a certain spot. How about teaching your dog that? How about maybe upgrading your dog's training to these fun games? And avoid that boring, maybe sit and down. If your dog doesn't like it, don't keep repeating those. Dogs find them very dreary if they're repeated all the time. So upgrade your training, make it fun, make it useful. You could teach your dog to load a washing machine. You could teach your dog to clean up around the house. You could... Teach your dog to bring the phone when it rings, fetch your remote control. And dogs love, as long as your methods of training were positive and fun, dogs love doing all these things. And of course, if you are doing your training, just make it fun. Alright? So, 
And if you are worried that now we're going to do training and we practice and we'll get our dog's training skills up to grade and we'll make them better, all of that, don't worry. Don't worry if your training regresses. Because when life returns to normal, we'll be able to pick up those pieces of training again. Don't smack your dog because he didn't do a sit when you told him or scold him because he didn't stop barking. If there's one lesson at this time we can learn as pet parents is that our dog's mental health is more important than their obedience skills. And remember, small sessions, if at all you're doing, are far better than one long drawn session. And if your dog is very active or naughty, put in playtime at those times. Rather than scolding your dogs, play with, the do with your dog when he's getting naughty. And don't scold your dog for disobedience. The aim of any training is to have fun, to relax. Don't be boring. Train. Sometimes I see people going, sit, calm down. That is so boring. Be fun, be lively, five minutes at a time. No more really needed. And you can pamper your dog. If your dog likes massages, you could do something like the Tellington Touch as well. You can look that up online. It's a lovely de-stressor for dogs to use. If your dog enjoys long massages, aromatherapy baths, just basic pampering, do it. I can't think of a better time because now your dog has you, you have your dog, you have the time in the world for your dog. Spend it with your dog. Enjoy it. And, you know, at the end, just enjoy this. Enjoy this period. Relax through this period. De-stress. Build a stronger bond with your dog because one day this will all end. You'll go back to your life. You'll go back to work. Your dog has to go back to being alone at home again, maybe for a few hours at a time. So use this time productively. Use it well and enjoy it with your dogs. Thank you very much for joining us at this webinar.